All right, our next topic tonight is catechetical program evaluation. Now, there is some overlap here. Goal setting is setting those milestones. Evaluating is really taking a look back and saying, you know, it's kind of the process that you will determine whether or not you met your goals. And so we'll, we'll kind of talk a little tonight about evaluating your overall program, assessing catechist growth, and in evaluating students, I think that's very important because we want to ensure that they are learning. That's always important to do. So let's kick it off with the overall program. Number one question, what's the word on the street? Are people coming and are they happy? And that's one way that you can evaluate your program by talking to people. And so it may be parents just, just you know, touching base. And again, this could be at any frequency, but so how's it going? You know, what's your child's or children's experience like in our program? Are you aware of all of the great things that we're doing? Do you have any questions for us that we can clarify? Do you have any suggestions? I think having conversations with people is, is an excellent way of evaluating because you are able to reach people face to face that may or may not respond to a formal evaluation tool. So certainly you can send out an evaluation asking a lot of questions about your program, but having face-to-face -face conversations is very important. Another group of people that you could speak with are your volunteers or your catechists or teachers if you're in a school setting. So again, same type of questions, you know, how are things going? Do you have everything you need? How can we better support you? You know, what suggestions might you have for our program? If you're at a parish, or even in a school setting, you could talk to the staff. You know, you can talk to the parish staff or you could talk to the faculty, a sort of broader range, other teachers or other catechists or certainly the leadership, catechetical leaders about any insights that they might be able to provide. You know, what have they observed that would be important for you to know about in your program? So that's another. And then certainly the clergy at your parish because different roles around your community may hear different feedback. So in other words, a pastor may be having dinner or, you know, something comes up about the faith formation program and yeah, maybe they forget to share it or it's something that they're not comfortable sharing. But if you prompt the conversation through questions, you know, certainly anything important would surface. And it's never a bad thing to hear affirmation that your program is actually going well. So, you know, and don't be afraid if someone has something to say that that could improve your program. We can all do better, right? So I think assessing your overall program or evaluating your entire program, number one, you should have conver conversations with the different people that represent your program. Next is communication issues. Something to consider is, are we communicating effectively? Are we using the right modes? You know, is, it, is email reaching? Are the bulletins reaching? And in my experience and from conversations I've had, we have had to get really creative and communicate in so many different ways to be able to reach people's different preferences. Some people want text messages. Some people want emails. Some people read the bulletin. Some people look on the website. So there are so many different ways that we can communicate, but certainly that would be a question that you could ask, especially in those personal conversations or in a formal evaluation tool. Is everyone aware of what's happening? Are there any suggestions or glitches in the communication that, that you have not been aware of? Also think about evaluating your print and digital learning resources. Certainly, I, I would say definitely schools, and I think still parishes are relying on some sort of printed textbook for their catechetical program. So is this remaining effective? Are there challenges using the textbooks you know, that you need to be aware of? Are there challenges with them being left in the classroom? I mean, maybe that's something, a small thing that needs addressing. Or digital resources. Maybe you've embarked on using some new digital tools and you need to know, are these effective? You know, are the parents able to access them to help their children? Are they family oriented? If they're specifically for the children, do they have access to the internet? Do they have access to hardware or devices to be able to you know, access the, the digital learning resources that you're um, hoping that they're using? So all of these are very important areas to evaluate. And if you're sort of going by your observation or I never heard anything negative about it, if you're not prompting the question, you may not be, be getting all of the information or if you only hear from the people who say everything is great, because we all have those people, which are wonderful to have around, 
but we need to hear from a wide variety of voices. And then finally, you can engage in these more formal evaluations. It's so easy to create a survey monkey or you know some sort of Google form to be to create a survey and send those out. The challenge with those again is not everyone will respond to those. And so you may gather a limited perspective from those who do respond. You can have the informal conversations, like I mentioned. I think those are very important. And you can make your own observations, especially if you're a catechetical. Maybe you want to visit classrooms and observe what's happening in a classroom just to sort of gather information yourself. So personal ob observations or assign someone to go and make observations and they're looking for very specific information. You know, are the students engaged? Do they seem to be learning? Are the volunteers prepared? Are the catechists prepared? Are they familiar with the content for this week? Or is it, you know, what, did it happen to be a free for all this week? Because we know that happens too. So there are a combination of ways that you can evaluate your program. And it's probably a good idea to consider using all of them. Just like the communication needs to be sent out in many different ways, maybe it's a good idea to use a combination of these formal evaluations, conversations, and observations. So that's uh, one way of getting at your overall program and how things went. The next area would be assessing catechist growth because, you know, the catechist has such a vital role in our faith formation programs. I always told catechists and, and still do, this is the most important information the children will ever learn. This, this information is eternal. You're establishing uh, a relationship. You're supporting a relationship. Maybe you're introducing these children to the person of Christ. And this is eternal. This never goes away. So it's very, very important that catechists can be as, as they can be in their short amount of time that they have with the children. So how can you assess catechist growth? One thing you can do is conduct personal interviews. And maybe you want to schedule these. And with online conference software such as Zoom or Teams or Google Meets or whatever, it's, it can be very easy just to schedule a quick you know, 10 minute, 15 minute check in with your catechists to, to sort of just talk about how they're going or how they went this year. And again, asking for any suggestions, recommendations, you know, information that you may not be aware of. So personal interviews with catechists is a very good way to sort of evaluate. We're not necessarily evaluating that person um, in, these, in these types of interviews but we're just trying to gather information. We know we're in the information age. Also classroom observation that does look at, you know, the effectiveness of the catechist. It can be very intimidating. And I know that this is uh, widely practiced, practiced in the academic setting, but just to stop in, it doesn't have to be intense, just to stop in and just take the pulse on what's happening, take any mental notes back with you, that maybe would feed those personal interviews. So that could prompt questions or conversations about what you observe. Self-evaluations is another way that can be very effective for catechists to, to think about their own development as a faith formation leader, as one who's reflecting their faith with or to the children. So if you were to Google or ask your Facebook for any recommendations on self-evaluations self that may already uh, be constructed or create one of your own. They're very easy to do. And just think about what would help them to reflect on their role as a, as a volunteer catechist and or teacher in that setting. And that might prompt them to want to make some changes to learn and grow. Monitoring certification progress. Most dioceses have certification in place and would expect that at least the catechists are making progress in certifications, not all, but if you're in a diocese that does have a certification program, it's a great idea to, to remind your catechists that there is an expectation that you're making progress in your certification. So monitoring their progress is a great, uh, a great way of evaluating and assessing catechist growth. You know, are they participating in this or has it been a couple of years? So we know things happen. It's a great idea though, just to go ahead and set that expectation that we really do encourage you to take part of our own uh, parish training or diocesan training or attend a national conference, especially if it's local. So that is a, another good tip. And then finally, encourage learning about using technology for catechesis. Now, obviously we're on a live stream. We're using technology in a new way to support catechists. 
And, and we know that over the pandemic experience that people were sort of forced to interact with technology and some had a positive experience and some may never want to go back, but technology is not leaving us. The, inter the internet has been here a long time, email, and there are so many great ed tech type tools that can be used in the classroom, even if it's just showing a video. So encourage your catechist to learn something new in the way of technology. And maybe you think about your infrastructure and how could you support them with technology in the classroom to make it easier for them. So those are some ways to assess catechist growth. And then moving on to students, some of the things that Deacon Matt had had mentioned, you can certainly have conversations with students any time of year. They will be, I think, brutally honest if you ask them a question. And so that's always a great way just to sort of touch base based with, with what's going on. But you can, you need to think about what you're assessing. What's really important to be assessing these children on? You know, is it key concepts? You, if you are using a curriculum, you can probably quickly identify four or five bullet points that they should be learning that year. You know, some major themes that they're learning that year. So identify those key concepts by grade level and and maybe talk with your catechist to make sure they are emphasizing those and talk with just kind of ask your student about two or three of those to get a sense of are they learning this information vocabulary is another very important area you know we have a catholic vocabulary that's to some degree borrowed by the greater christian church at large and sometimes we have very specific meanings so we want to make sure that our children are learning these key terms and understanding them within the context of the catholic church the acre exam is something that i know parishes uh, schools certainly use and parishes can use to sort of reinforce the reinforce catholic vocabulary so that the children are are learning these key terms, especially identified year by year, so by grade level. And then like Deacon Matt said, faith practice. What evidence of uh, belief are we able to observe in a child or in their family? Evidence of prayer, evidence of worship, or evidence of acts of charity? You know, are they loving? Are they showing that they're understanding what we're teaching through their behavior? And uh, those are great ways to sort of get a sense of our students learning and growing because ultimately that's why we're here right we want them to learn we want them to grow we want them to live as disciples of jesus so the big question there are they learning that's a really really important question about students and then i would just say to sort of cap off assessing or evaluating your program how are you assessing are you doing this um, face to face or are you using something more formal is it in print format is it in digital format? Or especially when it gets into the classroom setting, are you doing formal type assessments with your children? A lot of parishes want to shy away from tests. We don't want students walking away feeling like they have a 50 in, in their faith development. So, you know, you can use formal tests such as unit tests or lesson tests. You can certainly use informal ways of assessing their, their learning and growth, such as gamification, make a game out of the content and ask questions and make it a competition. That's always been a way to, to sort of two things, increase the level of engagement and participation and excitement in the, in the classroom, but also get a sense of, can they answer these questions? You know, did they learn anything? Or projects, having them to create a project toward the end of a class or a unit would be a great way for them to reflect on what they learned and create something new. And a lot of times that can be shared with your larger community. So it becomes a great way of hanging something in the hallway or if it was created digitally to share that with the parents or you know your parish community. So those are some informal ways. And then finally, just observational, that growth in virtue, again, that Deacon Matt spoke about. You know, do they have actions of generosity? Are they, do they have a good attitude about, you know, learning faith and, and sharing faith? So you've got a lot of ways that you can really assess the student. And those are some of the ways. I'm sure there are many, many more, but those are some that we could practically bring to you tonight on Catechist Stream.